Uh, the election of Donald Trump and uh, Rodrigo Duterte from the Philippines, as well as the uh, Brexit referendum, and if I may add the uh, result of the Colombian referendum on their peace process, are these are results that might confuse a lot of people who believe that democracy is the best way of making decisions, whether it's selecting leaders or where um, or adopting policies. Uh, the problem is the, the vote for Trump or Duterte is less about choosing them as leaders, but more about it's a protest vote against the system. Mm -hmm. The system has not really served the interest of the majority, mm -hmm. and they believe that they've been excluded mm -hmm. from mainstream politics. Mm -hmm. And the parties and the elites that used to serve them seem to have um, created a big distance mm -hmm. between them and the ordinary people. So while they may select leaders like Trump or Duterte, or they may opt to leave the EU, it's less about really choosing these leaders, but more about it's a scathing rebuke of the system. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I think it's not really a problem of democracy per se, but the parties, the politicians, and the elites who thought that they have democracy on their side all the time, mm -hmm. and that it's it's um, it's not um, and that re uh, consulting the people so should be something that they should do, mm -hmm. but they currently are not doing that. They are not responding mm -hmm. to what the people's needs are. They are not sensitive to the needs of the people. So I think this is more so a um, a protest against the people who are currently on top of the system rather than it's a um, criticism against democracy. Mm -hmm. There is no one model of democracy. There are different kinds uh, around the world. And um, democracy is a system that evolves mm -hmm. through time. Right? A lot of the uh, democracies that we have in place are what I call more electoral or representative democracies. Mm -hmm. We have some liberal democracies, but uh, liberalism is currently under retreat. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who feel that liberalism as an ideology has not served its purpose. Mm -hmm. So what is happening, I think, with the entry of politicians like Trump and Duterte is that it questions the continued viability of representative democracy, mm -hmm. but not necessarily democracy. Mm -hmm. So maybe there are, um, there are other models of democracy that uh, somehow respond more to people's needs and aspirations. And um, if you notice, the, a lot of these alternative models of democracy can be found in Latin America, where you have um, leaders that uh, rely less on traditional parties, but more so directly engage citizens. So examples of which would be countries in Bolivia, in Ecuador, they have more what we call participatory democracy, meaning they think that people should get involved more uh, rather than just rely on parties to do everything for, for, for the people themselves. Okay, the, 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 the thing with foreign policy and why it's, it's, it's different from other kinds of policies is that it relies more on what is the national interest of the country. The problem is uh, foreign policy requires a lot of predictability it requires a lot of consistency. Mm -hmm. If you have leaders like Trump and Duterte that keeps on making spontaneous remarks, uh, sometimes not really um, consulting mm -hmm. uh, experts as well as people who have, uh, have experience with foreign policy, it might not be good for, for the promotion of peace because um, a peace agenda is a long-term agenda, mm -hmm. right? That requires a lot of planning a, a lot of actions, uh, and um, peace is something that, we, that needs to be accomplished through a long period. Uh, the problem is, however, some leaders like Trump or Duterte, given that they don't rely on other people, they could make very drastic decisions mm -hmm. that may help peace promotion. Like, for example, President Rodrigo Duterte now is very serious in pursuing peace with all the groups mm -hmm. in the country that includes the Muslims and the communists. 
So it is very rare for a president in the Philippines to both pursue it. Sometimes they just go with the Muslims, sometimes with just the communists. But having lived in Mindanao, where there's a lot of conflict, not only, be, not only with the Muslims, but, but also with the communists, uh, you can have a very spontaneous president just making a very serious um, decision that we need to pursue peace. Mm -hmm. And he even said that um, there can never be peace in Mindanao if we don't talk to all groups, mm -hmm. right? Traditional parties tend to side only with certain groups and not others. Mm -hmm. So they have their, their, their allies. Mm -hmm. But outsider politicians, mm -hmm. like Duterte, mm -hmm. doesn't have any favorite group. Mm -hmm. He sees them all the same and he would want peace with everyone because if you only have peace with certain groups, the other groups could become spoilers of, of the peace. Okay. Scholars and researchers have a very important uh, role to play in peace promotion. Uh, they are producers of knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, they are producers of accurate research that could be used as basis for policy. Mm -hmm. A lot of our political leaders don't really know what is happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. It is researchers and scholars who really think hard. Mm -hmm. And um, not only do they think hard, but they also go to the grassroots, to the ground, mm -hmm. ask people, mm -hmm. uh, consult with other groups of what they think, how peace could be pursued. And whether in their, it, it is in their writing or it is in their engagement with the government, they, will, they can be of tremendous help mm -hmm. informing politicians that these are the realities that past policies might not be working, so you need to do some uh, refinements or modifications. But peace promotion is something that scholars need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also important not just to do research, but to do research that is policy oriented. Mm -hmm. And that, is, that means that um, you just don't publish, but you also uh, make sure that the policies from your research are, are clearly communicated to decision makers. That's very important. Uh, for example, the, um, the Colombian peace process that uh, was where the no vote, meaning people did not approve mm -hmm. of the peace process in Colombia, seems to illustrate the importance of educating the public, of letting them know what is, how, how, why is it important to pursue peace, and what are the necessary benefits as well as the costs uh, that is something that needs to be communicated, uh, that needs to be popularly, meaning uh, framed in a language that ordinary people can understand. Uh, peace education is very important, but it should start early. It should not just be when people are already adults. Uh, to uh, ensure that the next generation will have peace in its consciousness, it's very important for them to be educated at the earliest level possible. Uh, and that is the only way that peace could be lasting and sustained.